Changing the rules of a game when you think you might lose is called cheating. It invalidates the result of the game. But public cheating by elected government officials also invalidates democracy. All parties, including the UK government, signed a legal agreement not to campaign within 28 days of the final vote. But to try to halt the momentum towards independence, the rules were thrown out. In the last two weeks before the final vote, bigger and bigger offers were made to the Scots, including a radical plan for a federal UK with a brand new constitution. In order to make all those new campaigning promises, they had to break the law they'd helped to write and their faith with the people of Scotland. What faith can be put in promises like these? And what faith can be left in the rule of law that guarantees a democracy? Without a fair and secure voting process, no election or referendum can be trusted and there can be no real democracy. Fairness, the integrity of the vote, depends on a chain of security measures that ensure the custody and control of every stage of the voting process. The chain begins when the ballot papers are printed. It only ends when the last vote has been counted and verified. On the integrity of that chain hung the integrity of the Scottish independence referendum. But on September the 18th, 2014, that chain had broken before the first vote was cast. Vote rigging. It's a common crime in many countries. Systematic voter and electoral fraud, stealing democracy and disenfranchising voters. In countries with fair and democratic voting systems, security is extremely high. Ironically, it's assumed that without stringent precautions, there can and will be electoral and voter fraud. This is anticipated at every stage, from the printing of ballots through voting to the final count, and then precluded. One of the simplest ways for unscrupulous candidates, politicians, parties, or governments to steal an election is to have counterfeit ballots printed, filled out, and then added to the genuine ballot. This is why the Scottish referendum ballots had a secure identification system, a combination of serial number and unique identifying number for each ballot that should have guaranteed counterfeit ballots couldn't be used to swing the vote. Only ballots with these identifying marks could be counted at the final tally. Any paper that did not have them had to be considered potentially fraudulent and rejected. This would be the only way to ensure that false ballots hadn't been printed and somehow infiltrated into ballot boxes to be counted as real votes. Before the vote had even been counted, people all over Scotland were already talking about ballot papers which were blank on the back. Hundreds of voters across Scotland have now come forward and are willing to swear to this under oath. And for each person who noticed and reported the discrepancy between the correct ballot and the one they were given, we have to assume there were many more who did not. More people still insist they were never asked to show the numbered ballot back to the presiding officer at the polling station. If they ever made it to the counts, any ballots that were blank on the back were rejected. They had to be to safeguard the referendum from the possibility of deliberate fraud, from the possibility of fake ballots added to the count of genuine votes. This is why there were four separate checks on the integrity of the ballot papers. Seven separate reminders to polling clerks and officers in the referendum polling handbook and a printed instruction for voters about the need to show their unique number to the presiding officer before putting their paper in the ballot box. 
All of this was in place to guarantee the integrity of those ballot papers and of the final count. Official responses to these complaints have been glaringly inconsistent. Some officers insist it couldn't have happened. Others imply that these cases are nothing but hysterical yes voters with false memory syndrome. Elsewhere, the legal requirement and real importance of authentic, verified ballots is now being downplayed. But there were other security measures in place. One of the most important, the sealed ballot box. At every polling station, every ballot box was sealed, and each seal had a unique identifying number. So long as this number was recorded when the box was sealed, and the same unbroken seal with the same recorded number was on that ballot box when it arrived at the count, it should have been safe from tampering. That was what was supposed to have happened, and in most instances it probably did. But in far too many cases, Poland clerks have reported they were told not to record these numbers. Some of them protested. And appear to have been quite incorrectly reassured. In one instance, the explanation that was given for this was there was no point recording these numbers, since there was very little possibility of checking them at the count. This is such a critical part of the security chain that we took a quick look at the way ballot boxes coming in from polling stations were verified. What we found was horrifying. We're looking at a perfect storm, a convergence of breaks in the security chains that were supposed to safeguard the vote, from ballot papers that weren't, to ballot boxes whose integrity depended entirely on the personal honesty of the couriers. They represent the potential disenfranchisement of thousands of voters, and a breach in the security of the vote so significant that it undermines the integrity of the referendum itself. What follows next is not fact, but an interpretation of the facts, the stuff of novels, and also of whistleblowers. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin. In this scenario, there are politicians and Westminster factions so corrupt they'd be willing to use any means at their disposal, including the intelligence services, to subvert a democratic referendum. We're going to imagine that false ballot papers were printed deliberately, and just as deliberately handed out. Hundreds we already know about, thousands that we do not. In just a few strategically placed polling stations, a handful of paid or passionately committed individuals would be required to pass these out to obvious yes voters, and keep the usual record of the number of votes cast. In other areas, where huge yes votes were expected, there would be no need to bribe, persuade, or infiltrate a willing accomplice at the polling station. In both cases, it would be a matter of retrieving the ballot boxes later and replacing them with other boxes filled with the same number of votes and all with a no ticked in the box. Easy enough to do if there's no record of the security numbers on the seals of the ballot boxes leaving the polling stations. All that would remain would be to dispose of the evidence. Hi there. I got an honest, anonymous phone call uh, last night and it says I was to go to a, near a bin near Duke Street. Uh, beside that bin there'd be a wee white bag and it'd be, uh, just, there'd be stuff in it would maybe I would want to see. So I went there and I picked up this bag here um, and what I found in it was this. Couldn't you make your shit up, honestly? 
obviously people, it's either been a postmaster or it's been somebody that's, um, it's somebody that's intercepted these these postal votes or somebody that works in the postal place, the, 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 the vote counting place or something. That's, that's done all these, that's... I'm not going to go to the police about this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact the electoral registration people because this, this shouldn't be allowed to happen. I mean, these, these votes are clearly, every single one of them is a yes vote and these are all in the bin. Every single one of them is a yes. This shouldn't be allowed. I mean, how would you feel, honestly, when there's people, they're, they're going out their way, they're spending time to go into a voting station to cast their vote, and their vote hasn't even been counted. It's not even been counted. They've either sat and they've put their vote in, into the post box, you know, and they've posted it away and took the time and the effort, or they've went to the polling station and they've casted their votes, and they've just been rubbish. They've just been... Put in a bag, they've been taken out, put in a bin. It's, surely this is electoral fraud. This can't be right. I mean, how many other people have got bags like this? Or that these have been put in a bin? This is clear, clear terrible. And there's hundreds of them in that bag. Hundreds of them in a bin bag. I'm, got, I'm not going to contact the police, but what I'm going to do is contact the electoral register or the electoral commission. And ask them to investigate this because this, this is the, all these allegations are all mounting up. Make your own decisions, make your own mind up. Once the vast majority of fake ballots had been destroyed, there would be no danger from any future investigation where the ballot boxes might be opened. For all intents and purposes, the vast majority of papers in those boxes would be authentic. The claim of thousands of ballots that were blank on the back would become nothing more than mass hysteria among a population of sore losers. I, I've been asked to show this uh, ballot paper voting slip and also to turn it around to see if there's any marks on the back of it, um, which I'll do just now. There you go. There's nothing at all on the back yet. And I'll spin it back around again. There you go. Right, nothing on the back. Nothing. Alright, and I'll try and get a close-up of it. And what I've done is I've contacted the electoral commissioner and also the relevant authorities for investigation. Is this how it happened? Massive fraud? Government conspiracy? It doesn't matter. What does matter is that it so easily might have done. What does matter is that the integrity of the vote depends on the integrity of human beings and not an unbroken chain of unimpeachable custody and control. The scenario described here may be mere interpretation, but the break in that chain is not. The referendum vote was not secured. The result is unsafe. Now that we know this, no official assurances about the security and safety of the process can be trusted. No assertions about how trustworthy and hardworking the referendum officials were, and undoubtedly the vast majority were and are, are enough. We will never be able to trust the result of any vote again, until and unless this one is reviewed. Reforms are introduced to include real and unimpeachable oversight in the chain of custody and control. And the vote is retaken under conditions which preclude the kind of fraud which we have described here. Whatever happens next, Scotland has woken up and the fight for justice and freedom and democracy is just beginning.